If you were here at the start of the show, and I sincerely hope you were, you'll know that Jason and Karun are currently putting the best 50 grand sports cars to the test. Not everyone has that sort of cash, though. So, what if I said you could buy the exact same badges on near-identical cars, but for a fraction of the price? Yes, these incredible sports cars can now be on your drive with prices starting at just £8,000. Let me introduce them. The BMW Z4. The Porsche Cayman. And finally, the Audi TT RS. I'll begin with the cheapest. This second generation Z4 came out in 2009 and was initially launched with two engines, a 2.5 or a 3 litre. This 2011 model has got the 2.5 and its six cylinders produce 204 horsepower that'll get you to 62 in a shade over six and a half seconds. However, the top of the range 3 litre has 306 horsepower and does the same dash in 5.2 seconds, so that's the one I go for. If keeping up with the Joneses is important to you, then it's worth bearing in mind that of the three cars I'm driving today, this is the newest. In fact, the Mark III Z4 has only just been launched. And then there's the price. Yes, you can now get one of these snappy-looking machines for just £8,000. But is it any good to drive? Underneath me is a really, really good chassis. And the steering has plenty of feedback. And you can place the car wherever you want it to. But it hasn't got that pin-sharp, agile and thoroughbred stuff that you can get in some sports cars. It's like a sports car that's been wrapped up in a duvet. But it's fun for it still. In an effort to make the Z4 more comfortable, they replaced the Mark 1's fabric roof with a folding metal one. This might have resulted in a quieter car, but it added 180 kilos. In fact, it is the same as the weight of two male adult kangaroos. Thank you, Google. We've established that the Z4 is cheap to buy, but is it cheap to maintain? The answer to that is yes. Parts are relatively inexpensive, and apart from the usual servicing, only two things will cause you concern. The coil packs can fail, which usually causes a misfire, and £250 to depart from your wallet for a replacement. And the cylinder head housing gasket can sometimes leak, which will set you back £300. Other than that, pretty trouble-free motoring. Next up the price list, the Porsche Cayman S. Cayman, one word that strikes fear into pretty much every other manufacturer, because when this car was launched in 2006, it dominated the market and it has done ever since. And now early examples have reached really affordable levels. You can now get your hands on a decent early Cayman without stratospheric mileage for around £12,000. And that doesn't buy you the entry-level 2.7-litre version, but this 2006 3.4S. Woohoo! At just over 1,400 kilograms, this is the lightest of our three. And with 299 horsepower, it'll reach 62 in 5.4 seconds. Is 299 horsepower enough? <laughs> Never for me. And although it works brilliantly in this car, the Cayman has got such a capable chassis that it could cope with a lot more. And then there's the sound. <laughs> Put your foot on the throttle and your senses come alive. The car is ready, willing and very, very able. However, Porsche ownership isn't always a grin a minute. Now, I don't wish to be a bore, but the cylinder bores can get scored, and this can be a big problem for Cayman owners. Warning signs are a sooty exhaust and a tapping sound, usually from one side of the engine. If your worst fears are realised, you're looking at a new engine. Cost £8,000, which is the total cost of the price of the Z4 I've been driving. The other common fault could stop you from keeping a cool head. The radiator and aircon condenser are at the front of the car and are prone to corrosion. A spicy smell from the bumper is a warning sign that all is not well and £800 will be needed to fix it. A mere trifle in Porsche ownership land, as well I know. On to my final car. 
Mark II Audi TT was launched in 2006, but it would be another three years before the range-topping RS showed itself. When new, this TT RS would have cost nearly £50,000, but now a 2011 model could be on your drive for just 18000 340 horsepower from a 2.5-litre, five-cylinder turbocharged engine. <laughs> With a very grippy four-wheel drive system, it'll hit 62 in 4.7 seconds. <laughs> Which makes it comfortably the fastest machine of our three. The engine in this car is absolutely epic, and so are the levels of grip. And 10 years on, there's not a whole lot that can keep up with it. So, what to look out for? Well, you'd think 340 horsepower would be enough, but it seems many RS owners want more. So they have tuned the engine to produce over 400 horsepower. The tuning is cheap, but your insurance will be crucified. The RS also needs servicing twice as often as other TTs. Oh, and the glove box hinge can snap. A tiny part, but a bill that will cost £300 plus. So, after a day with these cars, which one would I have? It is very close because they are all such fun, but the one I would take home is the Cayman because its handling is so engrossing. <laughs>